Hello, good evening. Welcome to the fifth in our series of the JM Bank Redesigning Your 2020 Goals Chat. I'm Michelle Harris, past JNA Ambassador and Educator. Hi, and I'm Carla Grant, also a former JNA Ambassador and Entrepreneur. Um, joining us this evening is Dr. Hume Johnson, um, a personal branding expert and author of the book Brand You. And we just want to welcome Dr. Johnson. I'm so glad, we're glad to have you. Hello. So, thank you very much. Yes, so, on this episode, we will be having a conversation about how young professionals and soon to be tertiary graduates you know, who are either about to launch their careers or have, a re have recently started their business. So we want to know how they can build their brand in a climate such as this one. All right. So, so Rochelle, tell me a little bit about how you've been coping with COVID as a high school science teacher. Thank you, Carlisle. But, you know, to be very honest, while there are, while there have been challenges, such as you know longer work hours more time planning lessons mm -hmm. and more face-to-face -face interaction with my students i must say that covid 19 has provided me with the opportunity to build myself personally and professionally so in light of that you know i started a youtube channel which is geared towards education both general mm -hmm. and special education so i provide students and educators with tips and learning styles different a wide variety of content right. and that has helped me to go personally and professionally in my in this time you know in this pandemic i have also completed the syllabus for my exam group my upper school group from february so mentally i was a little bit more prepared for this covid right. so i had you know speed things up a little bit and first down to make sure they're prepared right. And I'm really grateful for the opportunities that this pandemic has provided me with, because I am able to use this time to dig deeper into my area of expertise. And in light of that, you know, I have volunteered with Jamaica Teaching Council, where I train educators online how to use mm -hmm. digital um, teaching techniques and how to engage in distance learning more, effective, more effectively. Nice, nice, nice. Sounds sounds very good. Thanks. Um, well, for you, Carlyle, as an entrepreneur, you know, mm -hmm. specializing in digital marketing, content creation, event planning, mm -hmm. a great thing. But I, I'm, I'm sure it has been you know, challenging a bit. So how has this COVID affected you personally and career-wise? Um, well, I mean, it's been a two-edged sword, so to speak. Um, in terms of some clients have you know would have paused the service or would have um, downsized or packages to suit their income at the, in this time um, but in another breath it has opened up a lot more opportunities um, a lot of clients now finally see the need for digital services um, i've always been saying from from the jump that you know digital is the way to go that's the that's the future um, so it's just so interesting to see that all of these companies now are realizing that they need more content they need more videos more graphics they need live streaming to happen and that has opened up a few more doors so it's kind of it kind of balances the loss that i would have incurred and you know also similar to what you said rochelle um i've been able to develop more skill sets, you know, did a few courses, you know, learn some things, spent, I think, I think this pandemic happened, just looking at it from a positive side, it happened in a way where I think the world was moving too fast and we need to just kind of slow down a little bit to kind of just, you know, get some time to ourselves to improve. That's just, that's just a positive side to looking yeah. at a positive perspective. And that's um, that's yeah, true. yeah. Because the truth is, I I try not to take challenges in a negative way. Because, right. And based on your conversation, I realized that we really never really we never really waste a crisis. Right. A good thing. 
Right. And you know, a lot of us have never experienced a pandemic. So it's it's just interesting how we have used the time um and you know remained safe and gone through it. Well we're still in it, but you know. Right. Um but we just want to just shift a bit to some questions for um uh, Dr. Johnson. Indeed. Um you know, our first question is, you know, what do you what do we mean by you know building a personal brand? What does it entail and how can young professionals build a strong brand in a time such as this? Okay. Well, uh, first of all, I've been listening to your conversation and I wanted to to just say uh, it is such a pleasure to meet both of you and congratulations you. Uh, individually on what you guys are doing to to scale your brand and to to actually mobilize your career i think that's essential and i did take a peek at your social media so i kind of know what you guys are up to and very well done you know thank you uh let, let's talk first about what personal branding is not uh it is not about building a website it is not about a, a, a logo and i think uh, it will be strange for people to hear me say this but it's not about trying to attract a following on social media in this relentless pursuit to be popular, to be known or to be to be seen. It's not even about building a, a, a YouTube channel. I mean, uh, we're not saying that being visible is not important because 3.48 billion people are online and that's 45% of the total global population. So obviously there's a virtual world that we want to be a part of, but it's essential to actually discover what your brand is first before you communicate that brand uh, on online or offline. And I think that long before the proliferation of, of social media, people were building really strong and respected personal brands. So I believe that if you were to think of your personal brand as who you are, I mean, essentially it is the sum total of your personality, first of all. I say personality because we don't meet your skills when we meet you. When we meet you, we actually meet who you are and we determine whether we want to even engage with the person that's standing in front of us. And so it's a combination of your personality, your expertise, your skills, your gifts, your talents, your, your, your experience, your, your assets. And, and I love to say your values as well, your character uh, yes. principles that you live by. So when you think of of, of all of that combination of what you bring to the table, then you have to see your personal brand as who you are and the value that you bring to the table. We think of it as, uh, you know, personal branding is a buzzword of the moment, uh, but it's really about your reputation and your personal capital, so to speak. How are you perceived? What are the beliefs and the ideas that you hold about yourself and that you communicate about yourself and uh, do these align with what other people think about you as well. So you want to think of your personal brand as kind of the the the, the positive expectation that people feel when they encounter right. you, when they when they come into contact with you, when they want to start a professional relationship with you, what is a person that is showing up uh, in front of them? Your personal brand, if you figure it out and you and you can articulate it, it also gives people the confidence to to know that yes, I want to work with Carlisle. I, yeah. I really like um, his personality. I like how punctual he is. I like um, his integrity. I like the character. I like the fact that he delivers quality service. Yeah. Uh, because we can look at your social media and you can have tons of followers. And you can have all these wonderful graphics going on and it's wonderful and we love to see all of that. But we can still walk away from your social media not really clear about who you are and what value you're offering. And so my advice to, to, to young professionals is this, really try to figure out what your brand is first and then you can thrust yourself online and communicate it in the various ways in which we are, we are capable of doing in the, in the 21st century. Right. It's I I really I really like um, that response because it it kind of hit home for me, in, especially in the fact that you mentioned you don't need to have a lot of followers, you don't need to be all of this extravagant trying to be popular. But it's and, great it's great to have followers, you know, because yeah, you, you, you do it, it, want to articulate um, so, your business. Sure, and you know it gives a community to share your exactly. your brand. your ideas. But, I mean, it's. 
I I personally don't have you know the 10k 20,000 <laughs> followers, but I've gotten many opportunities just by how I have you know communicating my personal brand online. You know, and you're offering value. Think of a time right. before social media, we were still offering value. There were tons of people that we respected and admired because they were contributing in their industry and they were standing right. out as leaders. So uh, that is what, what I want people to focus on. Uh, what you bring to the table in terms of your skills and your expertise and your personality and your character. And then you communicate that um, on right. social media. So it's right. more of bringing quality, not quantity. The, uh, the cake, not just the icing. Yes. <laughs> okay. What about young professionals who have been laid off from their first job? How do they, in the middle of a crisis, build a personal brand? And yeah. you, you know what? Uh, young professionals should already have a personal brand. So whether you are in a job, you should know your personal brand. If you're laid off from your job or you're in between jobs or you're unemployed, you should really know what your personal brand is. So one of the first things you want to do right now is to take stock of your competencies. For example, you don't want to just be throwing resumes around the place. What you want to do is to almost do a, a SWOT analysis. In business, we call it a SWOT analysis. But so you want to do a personal SWOT analysis, S-W-O-T, when you look at writing down what your strengths are, what are the core competencies that you know that you bring to the table? What are the weaknesses that you have that you think may be preventing you from achieving what you want to achieve? And how can you work to improve these areas? What are the obstacles that you think will prevent you from doing what you want to do? And what are the opportunities that you can take advantage of during this period? So the assessment has to take account of not just your qualifications. People love to talk about the degrees that they have and the certifications that they have that's wonderful unless you're going to bring value added to the to the process a qualification is not going to make much sense because everybody else has that same qualification they're coming out and you have tons of competitors waiting outside to be interviewed for this same position how do you stand out and this is where personal branding comes in because it gives you an opportunity to say okay i am going to start to take stock of the areas in which i'm really competitive so first of all, think about what, what strong technical skills do you have? These are your hard skills. These are the things that we train for. So if you're an engineer, you can, you can think about the skills that you have in that area. Uh, in digital marketing, for example, if you code well, if you research, if you're excellent at project planning, what are the hard skills and technical skills that you have? You also have to think about the transferable skills, right? Because you have industries now that you, the industry you have a degree in may be suffering and they may not be hiring right now. So what do you do? You do have to look at those crossover skills. Do I have skills right now that can be relevant to other industries? I may have really strong communication skills. You may be a very good team leader. You, you may be excellent at listening. You may build relationships positively. And so those are skills that you can cross over. I also ask people to think about human relationship skills. So when, you, when we think of human relation skills, we're really thinking about soft skills. You know, last year I read an article that said that the World Economic Forum is saying that in 2020, what we, we, what we will need are really soft skills. And then the global pandemic hit and people realized that these soft skills are important. Everybody had to pivot. So we had to learn how to adapt. And Charles um, Darwin, when he talked about the origin of the species, he said it wasn't the strongest people who survived. It was those who could adapt to difficult and changing situations. So think of your ability to adapt. Think about how do you, do you have a strong work ethic? Do you get along with others? Are you a team player? Uh, are you self-motivated? Are you disciplined? So those are, do you build rapport with other people? Can you empower a team to get things done? Can you collaborate very effectively uh, so that you can push a product um, forward? And I think that one of the things that we're missing is, is we tend to focus on the hard skills. If you can't do this job, 
then we don't want you. But what about the other things that make people um, have longevity in a job that sustains them when things go wrong? And these are our human skills or personality traits. These are the soft skills that I think that young people need to start playing up. And if you think about your competitive advantage, what is what is your superpower? Sometimes it's not the fact that you can code and digital market. These are technical skills that most people can be trained to have. But it is the occasion now when you think, oh, maybe I, I'm a very committed person. I'll give 100% to this task. At 8 o'clock in the morning, I'll give him this, I'm giving the same commitment at 10 p.m. in the night. If you hire me for this job, I will never, I, I will solve this problem. And if, if I can't solve this problem, I will find out how to do it. I'm willing to take the initiative. These are things that are essential in setting you apart when you're trying to seek a job. And also look at your character. I mean, if, if you're excellent at something and we think that you're a disgusting personality, I certainly don't want to work with you. And many times when we're called to the table, when they look at your resume and they're calling you for an interview, they have already determined that on paper, you are good. You know, you have created a resume which is substantive, it is effective, it works. But we want to find out as an, as an employer, can we work with you? Are you going to be a positive part of the team or are you going to be a very toxic element in that team? And so I think that some of those are also very important. Having discovered your brand, your strengths and your weaknesses, you really have to ask yourself some hard questions. What job do I want to have? Uh, what companies need the skills that I have? What companies are hiring right now? And what companies at what companies do I think I can offer the most value? And if you were to ask yourself these questions, then great, now you need uh, a marketing strategy. This is now your self-marketing strategy. So you know your strengths and your weaknesses, you know what value you bring to the table, you know what companies you wanna target, so now you're ready to position. And positioning means, who am I? What value do I bring to the table? And who are my target segments? So the target segments are those companies that you know are hiring right now. Those are the companies that you can offer the most value to. And those are the companies that maybe align with my ultimate goal. So I would be asking myself some really critical questions. Who has the job that I really want? Ultimately, what do I want to do with my life? And who has a job that I'm really envious of? I used to do it. I'm like, I can read better than that person. Mm. I need to be on this TV reading this news. And that time I was not even out of high school. When I'm looking on the television and proclaiming to be able to read the news better than the people on the TV that I've never met. So you have to be really intentional and look forward towards a vision of, the, of your life five years or 10 years down the road and ultimately, and be realistic as well. Is it something that you can really do? What tools do I need to get me where I want to be? Do I need to upskill right now? Do I need to get some other qualifications? Am I willing to take a lower salary? Am I willing to take a lower position that somehow can lead me along the path that I want? Sure. Do not just throw resumes out there, guys, and hopefully hoping that it, it sticks. What you want to do is to make sure you know exactly what your strengths are, what value you can offer to these industries, and then you develop a strategy to target these particular organizations and companies, or pivot and literally create your own business. Can you sell yourself to this marketplace, or can you create your own job and create jobs for your peers as well? Can you guys pull together, three or four of you, and create a product together, something that you think is needed in the marketplace that you can do. And I think, or, you know, sorry to be carrying on like this, but our colonial education system really has conditioned us in a very bad way. It has conditioned us, you need a degree, and when you get this qualification, you need to seek a job. You can try to negotiate a particular salary and hopefully you can get the life that you want. It has not conditioned us to say, what value can I bring to the table? What problem can I solve? And for whom can I solve this um, problem? And is there a gap in the marketplace that I can supply this solution to? And if our people start to think in this way, then we wouldn't have to worry about the economy not having enough jobs for people because we'd have 
uh, young people who are millennials who are understanding that the digital economy is here and we need to upskill and to find the jobs that match the economy of the future. Yeah. Right. Okay. So you have answered the question or one of my questions yeah. pretty much, you know, how young persons can pivot, which is a buzzword nowadays. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but it's not even that. Um, go ahead, go ahead with your question. I was going to say something about pivoting because pivoting is not even a new term. We used but, to pivot during netball. Do they still play netball? Yeah. Do they still play? Yeah, but there is a there is a concept of the pivot in netball when you're trying to get the ball into the net and your competitor is coming at you and you literally have a movement when you kind of shift your your body away and you kind of pivot in a in a new direction. So, right. so that was that was the nature of the question, you know, how young persons or young professionals, entrepreneurs can pivot a time like this. I understand. You know what? A pivot in business and in the job market is really just a shift in strategy. And you only shift strategy when you need to. I don't think people should simply start out on a path and then they're like, ah, oh, I'm bored, I'm going to pivot. You really pivot when there is a crisis or there is a, an important problem that needs to be addressed. So the global pandemic was a problem. It's a big, massive crisis that suddenly hit us and kind of turned our life upside down. And I work in the education industry, and so we pivoted, and Rochelle, you are aware of this, that suddenly we weren't teaching face-to-face -face anymore. We had to suddenly, everything moved online. And, and I think, Carlyle, you can appreciate that yeah. all of a sudden, all this time we thought that we were, di were in the digital age and everybody was on social media, everybody connecting. Yeah. But this was the first time that businesses actually realized that we can work effectively online. Yeah. And there were things that really could be achieved or everyday lives could be achieved or health the way we learn, the way we communicate, the way we socialize could actually still happen in a yeah. virtual in a virtual environment. So I think pivoting is about really taking advantage of the opportunities that are available. If you have lost your job and you need to pivot into something else, then you have to really anchor that on your personal brand. You shouldn't be worried about, oh, what am I gonna do next? You should be aware of the value that you bring, the technical skills that you have, the soft skills that you have. You may want to do a couple of courses as you guys have done throughout this period to upskill yourself, to make yourself ready for another industry. You can cross over your skills, you can transfer some of the things that you're already doing in digital marketing and in education to a new platform. What else can I do? You know what? Um, a lot of employers sometimes when they see a gap in your resume where you haven't worked, they think of it as a weakness because you haven't done anything to fill that gap. So they think that you're not skilled enough and they move on to someone else. What you need to do, even if you're not working, earning income, you have to fill that time. So Rochelle decided to start a YouTube channel. You can start a YouTube channel. You can lend your expertise in a blog, show that you have value that you're offering. You can start a new, um, you can start a business on your own. You can determine that, okay, you know what? I have digital skills. Uh, why don't I lend these digital skills to crisis management? What kind of, we're in a crisis. Can I talk about crisis management? How does my own organization deal with crisis? Can I use the technical skills that I have to help another company uh, thrive in this um, market? And I think right. when people pivot, they sometimes get worried because they're like, this is not what I studied for. But what about the thing that you have here? Your brand is not your job title. Don't get attached to the title and the job position that you have. Get attached to the idea of the value that you bring because you take your brand to that job. And then when you leave that job, you're actually taking your brand with you wherever you go. And so it is the strength of who you are that you need to, to build on. And if you can't find a job, it is time to create your own employment. And I think that's the best pivot for, for young people in the, in the contemporary Jamaican economy. Create the jobs find the problems in your industry that need to be solved and create the solutions 
and pitch your services to industries, pitch your services to companies. And I think that um, when you're, find the right time to pivot, number one. Number two, make sure that you're pivoting for growth opportunities. Don't pivot where you're heading down. It should be horizontal. You're either moving crossways into a similar situation or you're moving vertical, you're moving upwards, but it shouldn't be downwards. It has to represent growth opportunities or else now is not the time um, to pivot, right? Okay, so the timing is very important. Interesting. Appreciate that response so much. And as you speak on pivot and taking advantage of the opportunities, we know networking is a next word that's going around. Mm -hmm. So how, what advice then do you give young professionals? How do they approach this networking? Because I'm sure there's a technique to it, there's some strategy, some approach. How do they practice networking during this time? Uh, you know, uh, one of the things about networking is that it's for me, it's a critical competency. It's it's you can't escape it. I know it's it's about nurturing and fostering uh, personal and professional relationships in a way that can help you to advance your career. I know, unfortunately, in Jamaica, we tend to see networking as a dirty word that. Uh, you have to have connection. And if you don't have this connection with these people over here with clout, then you can't get opportunities. And so we kind of pull back because we're thinking that these people are only getting ahead because they had the right contacts. And I don't have the right contacts, so I can't um, go forward. Whereas, so what is wrong with that, actually? What is wrong with having some contacts? What is wrong with building that kind of, nurturing that kind of relationship? And nowadays is not even hard to do. There was a time when I was leaving college that you actually had to show up at the particular organization where people are at. You had to physically be in their, in their presence. So, but nowadays, uh, when all the groups are online, their organizations that are online, their um, social media has really disconnected the distance that used to be between new graduates, uh, younger professionals, and the people who are schooled in their, in their business and in their industry. Now you can follow them on social media. And I suggest that people do that. Follow the people that you want to connect with. Uh, don't just stalk them on social media. Uh, collaborate uh, with them. Uh, follow their philosophies. Uh, reach out, retweet what they're doing, comment on their tweet, engage in a conversation, write them a private message on LinkedIn to say, I really enjoy the work that you're doing. I think it's fantastic. I really would want to be a part of that. How can I help you to, to do this job? Can I learn from you? I'd love to be a part of this next project that you're working. Here is my resume. And I remember a few years ago when we were doing our, our uh, symposium on Brand Jamaica, uh, there was a young man who had just returned from China. And this is a young guy who spoke uh, perfect Mandarin, black Jamaican kid. And we were fascinated that and intrigued by the idea that he was so skilled that he had a master's and he couldn't get a job. And he reached out to us on LinkedIn and he said, I see that you're, you're going to do a symposium. I'm excellent at facilitation. I'm good at this and that. And we were very impressed with him and we reached out to him. And he was our point person in Jamaica while we were overseas here in Rhode Island. And he really organized a thing for us. And he, he actually facilitated one of the sessions for us. And when I look back at that, I, I thought that was confidence. That was knowing that he brought some value to the table and really reaching out to people that he didn't know uh, to be able to access that opportunity. One of the other things that I find that uh, professionals really should try to do is to join local organizations or join industry organizations. If there aren't many available uh, in Jamaica, create your own organization. You can do it online, invite a few people, create a group, invite a few people, like-minded people, and allow them to join the group. A mastermind group. Right. So and engage in the conversations about your field. Invite people who you think are experts to come and meet you in the group and have this kind of conversation that we're having right now so that you can get to connect and build that relationship. Don't just exchange information. Don't just exchange numbers and never call. If you call and they don't answer, don't feel shy. Call again. 
Another example, a young woman who wanted my attention uh, on her personal brand. And I was overseas last summer in St. Lucia. I never wanted to answer any business emails. She wrote me several times. I, keep, I kept putting her off, but she never gave up. This is a young woman I didn't know. She reached out to me. Eventually, she was in my house. <laughs> she was in my house when we agreed to meet. And so we, we had that um, discussion because of her persistence and because she knew that um, I could offer her some value. But joining organizations or creating organizations in another way in which um, this, is, this used to be the way we did it. When I left um, college, I remember I wanted to be in the communications industry. I also knew that I could contribute to the political landscape. And so I was part of my police youth club in, in St. Anne, uh, in Claremont, St. Anne. I was part of the Claremont Community Development Action Committee when I was just 17 years old. And these are, 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 are populated with expertise from Kingston and from other parts of the country. And I was probably the youngest person in the group at the time, but it connected me with, uh, with executives. And one of those executives, Hope McNish, big up yourself, Hope McNish, she gave me my first job in Kingston as a filing clerk at IMP, Institute of Management and Production, I think it was called. The woman couldn't find her files, I'm sure, because I was not good at filing. But she, I, it did connect me with people who had the clout, who had the, 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 they were in a position to assist me. Networking also provides job leads. If you're in between jobs and you're looking to pivot, there are people who are in industry, they're in positions of leadership, they know where the opportunities are. Even if their company is not hiring at the moment, they can lead you into different um, areas that you can offer value. Advice, please stand on the strength of your personal brand. You have to bring something to the table. It's not a favor that you're begging. You're actually coming to the table and say, this is my expertise. I can bring a new perspective. This is my perspective. This is the angle that I would bring to what you're doing. I really want to talk to you about that. I've done research which suggests that if you do this, because this is your asset. This is now what you are bringing to the table. And in that regard, this is what you can bring to the networking conversation. Again, you cannot simply exchange numbers and leave it at that. You have to reach out and not just one time. I'm not saying stalk the people. I am saying reach out on more than one occasion. You have to get your name ahead of people. People get emails. They get a ton of emails per day. It goes down the list. They may not see your email. So you have to follow up. When you apply for a job, follow up as well. Connect with the people. Be in the area in which they are. Uh, online or in person and show that you also bring value to the table, ask for advice, ask for mentorship, ask to collaborate, ask to volunteer so that that spirit of partnership can bring you all the opportunities or at least they can put you on to other people who can give you the opportunities that you want to advance um, your career. All right, and you know, also want to add that you know, a lot of persons believe that, you know, networking and links, as people yeah. call it, yeah. you know, just came out of nowhere. Everybody started out with none. You know, it just happened yeah. due to intentional actions, you wanting to reach out to somebody, that person sending you so many emails because they were so sure that they wanted to, they needed your expertise, your assistance. And just a similar story to me, I, I was at a point and in school where I needed a mentor, like I really thought that right. I needed somebody to guide me because I was really interested in marketing. Right. So I saw this lady at an event one day and she just stood out to me. Like I didn't know what she did. I didn't know who she was, but she right. stood out to me. She wore white glasses, you know, it pops. Right. And I touched my friend and I said, yeah, well, who's that? And he told me, and it turns out she was a head of marketing of a, of a big organization. Mm -hmm. So I said, head of marketing and she looks so young. I need to know what she's doing to be at that place exactly. and, and looking seemingly young. Um, exactly. Right, right. So I I asked her own, I asked everybody I knew, a call organization. I got that email for her finally. Right. And I sent her an email, you know, telling her about myself and telling her that I was seeking mentorship. But I, I 
shifted it in a way where it wasn't just a I want one to want exactly one, so what you can do I help you know are you help me type of situation and she's you know she she does she said she's never done it before but because of how I drafted my email and presented myself to her she met with me and the rest is history and wow. because of that I got a job she just made a call I was in a situation where I didn't really like the job I was at and she just made a call to a to a colleague right got an interview got the job well wow. just and, like and, that and just to add yeah you know, it, it's very important that we understand the concept of networking as you say it's not about wanting 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 and taking right. it. what is it that you as a professional as an individual have to offer right, right. very important and right. I mean, that helps you stand out as a professional as dr king said when you go to to a job interview they're not just looking at what you have present on your resume you know what is it that you can offer this company how different are you are you set apart from everybody else and, and yeah and part of it too is is your resume has to be 2.0 right now you you can't use the same resume that you've used in the past that simply outlined the job that you you did you you really have to reinvent the resume the first thing that they see is that resume is never even you they see your resume they may they may research you in this country they do research you on social media to see you um, what you're about but that resume has to, to stand on your personal brand it has to be anchored on the skills that you have the competences you have uh your experience but not just highlighting where you worked you have to uh communicate what did you bring to the organization how did the organization benefit from their encounter with you uh say for example you are in marketing and you worked at a particular say you worked at jamaica national in marketing and you're moving on you should be able to say that i worked on this particular marketing project and uh, based on so and so they were able to increase their viewership by 50 percent yeah, it has to be something tangible that you can show. I didn't just learn things. I, I really dislike when people say, oh, I, I'm willing to learn, or this is what I learned at this job. We don't want people who are learning. We want people who are offering value. Yes, we're all, you're always going to learn something, but I think you should, you should lean into and lead with what benefit, how did the organization benefit from you being there? in a very specific way i was gonna yeah. say that you know also think that persons should use their social media more wisely i mean yes we want to show you know the great highlights of our lives and the nice things but as you mentioned you know you look people look at people's social media to get a perception of them so use your social media platforms as an extension yeah. of your resume so persons can get an idea of you professionally, but they also see that, okay, this person is fun, they're about this, they're about that, you know? 60% of hiring managers in the United States say they look at your social media before um, hiring. Right. I, was, I was visiting a friend at an organization and she was going through a series of resumes and she was on uh, social media. I said, do you get to be on social media at this place? She said, no, I'm actually going through 200 applicants and I have to go through each of their social media before we select our shortlist. I was a bit surprised that that was how technical it had got. I know that they would look, but I didn't realize that they looked before they made the shortlist in this particular organization. Mm -hmm. And your social media is one of those places that Yes, you, you want to show how fun your life is, and that's great as well, because you don't want to look or come across as one dimensional. But yeah. you can use it to, to, to demonstrate your expertise, you know. Sure. And I think what you guys are doing with digital marketing, and I noticed that on Rochelle's um, uh, YouTube page, she's really offering a lot of value where people can really learn a lot of information on how to, to do their assignments and to, and to approach their education. That's value. If you can flick and share some of those a few times per week on your social media, then it's not just about, oh, um, you're having fun outdoors. It's about, oh, if I need this service, I can come to Rochelle for it. If I need digital marketing stuff, uh, then I'll come to Carlisle for that as well, because I am now aware 
that this is a value that you offer as well. And it could be an opportunity to earn extra income as well. Correct. And as you mentioned previously, you know, speaking about bringing value, that leads me now to ask the final question, you know, professionals tend to be, the professional development of many young persons tend to be affected by where they're from. But I know it's not it's not a uh, final. So how can they actually overcome that hurdle and still put themselves out there regardless of where they're from? You know, you know, it's not where you're from. It's where you're going. And you know, I'm from I'm from Saint Anne, Claremont in Saint Anne. But come from country. I mean, and you know, from the time I was in high school, sitting on my veranda in the hill of of, of Crawl Street, I knew where I wanted to go. I had, I had every vision of how that would look. And every move that I made since high school was about getting to where I wanted to be. It wasn't about, oh, I, and, and when you look at rural hamlets in Jamaica, they are places with very limited economic opportunity, very limited job opportunity, very limited uh, opportunities for escape in the sense. And so, and when, if you used to watch Ian Boyne's program, you know, before he passed, there were thousands of stories of, of Jamaicans who had overcome great odds. They were from very poor material circumstances and they overcome great odds to achieve um, what they want. And this is not to say they aren't structural deficits that limit people uh, in this country, in our country, Jamaica, um, and right. prevent them from achieving certain things. But if, I, if you were to focus on the value that you bring to the table, please understand that I have to give Jamaican employers a lot of credit because the vast majority of employers are looking for candidates who can actually deliver the job. They are not looking where you come from and determining that you're not going to bring value. They are looking for, can you deliver the job? Can you set deadlines and achieve it? Or do you have good character? Uh, are you? Do you have a strong work ethic? Are you going to show up on time? Are you going to do this job in the way that it ought to be done? And if you really stand in the power of your personal brand, then you will, you will achieve because you can operate on the merit of that. And I think that one of the things that we do in Jamaica is we have these conversations, and it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Uh, it, it says you're from this community and because you're from this inner city community, it is unlikely for you to achieve success. And I think people buy into that and we need to start changing the narrative that it doesn't matter where you're from. Yes, you're from a difficult circumstance, but look at this person over here. Look at that other person over there who, who are also from these. Where all of us are poor. We are we're a slave society. We have all survived slavery. We have all survived poverty. We, we are all poor. We're all trying to overcome great odds. That alone should give young people, wherever they are, the, the impetus uh, to, to achieve the goals that they've set for themselves. Focus on the value that you bring to the table, not the address that you are from. Because withstanding all of that, look look at myself. Look at myself. I wasn't born with a gold spoon in my mouth, but I had a sense of what I could bring to the table. And I was very intentional about creating the career that I wanted. And I didn't have any money either. And so uh, money should not be an obstacle. Yeah, yeah money is definitely not, a, not an excuse. Not an excuse at all. Um, it's just about being intentional and making use of your opportunities and right. and time. You know, absolutely. Um, absolutely. But you know, uh, unfortunately, that all the time we have for this evening's discussion. And we just want to thank everybody for tuning in. And we're going to be back with you next week on Thursday, June twenty fifth, um, when we'll be discussing another interesting topic. So thank, thank you, guys. you guys so much. It was such a pleasure. Right. Thank you. Thank you.